Hello, welcome back to using the Eclipse Workbench. In the last lesson, we looked at a number of existing Eclipse keyboard shortcuts and we learned how to create a new shortcut. In this lesson, we'll work through an example where we change an existing shortcut key. Then we'll learn how to save all of our Eclipse customizations and preferences so we can reuse them. Then we'll look at the very cool Eclipse Compare Editor which allows us to easily see what has changed from an earlier version of a file. Finally, we'll see how we can use Eclipse's local history to restore a file even after we've deleted it. First, let's change an existing shortcut key. If we look at the existing shortcut for Control P, which we'll do by pressing Control Shift L twice, we'll sort by binding, come down to Control P. We can see that it's assigned the print command. Now many developers find that they very infrequently print in Eclipse. If so, we could change Control P to show the Package Explorer view, which is a very common view used for Java development. So let's try this. First we need to find the command for showing the Package Explorer view. Now is it Show Package Explorer or Open View Package Explorer or what? Let's try using the Quick Access Control 3 command. So we'll cancel here. We'll press Control 3 and just type the word package and we can see it's show view package explorer. Now that we know the name of the command we can go back by pressing control shift L twice and what we want to do is go down to show view package explorer. And again, we'll enter in Control P. Now notice that we have this asterisk here in the binding, and this indicates that there's a key conflict, which is what we would expect because we still have Control P assigned to printing. So if we click here on the binding to sort by binding, We now can see the other one that's where we've got a conflict. So if we select the print and press remove binding, now the print no longer has a shortcut key. And if we sort by command and then scroll down to show view package explorer, we see that it is bound to control P. So now, if we exit and close the Package Explorer, Control P reopens it. And it also moves the focus there if it's minimized or if it's not in focus. So now we've seen how to customize keyboard shortcuts to make Eclipse work just the way we want it to. Next, let's look at two other Eclipse features. In Eclipse, we can choose whether we want to use double click or single click to open files. Let's try it. We'll go Window, Preferences, General, check single click for open mode, and let's also check select on hover. Press OK. And now, if we hover on a resource, for example, in the Package Explorer, it automatically selects that. And if we single click, once it's selected, the resource is opened. So by changing the preferences we can either have the default double click behavior or single click behavior. Now in this tutorial we've seen many ways in which we can customize Eclipse to work just the way we want. These customizations are saved in our Eclipse workspace, which is the top level of organization. Now, there are times when we may want to use more than one workspace. When we create a new workspace, our customized perspectives and preferences are not automatically copied to the new workspace. Fortunately, we don't need to redo these preferences manually. 
Instead, we can just export and import all of our configured preferences in Eclipse. To do that, we just select File, Export, Preferences, and we can either export all or we can be selective. For example, we could just export the shortcut key changes. We browse to find a file. We'll call it Preferences. Press Save. Press Finish. And now our preferences are saved in a file. And if we created a new workspace, in the new workspace we would just go File, Import, Preferences, browse to the file, and all our preferences would automatically be set up in the new workspace. The next thing we're going to look at is one of my all-time favorite features of Eclipse called the Compare Editor. If you've done much programming, you might have run into a situation as follows. You have a program that works just fine, then you make some changes, and it stops working. So you try to change it back, but it still doesn't work. This can be very frustrating and waste a lot of time. The Eclipse Compare Editor allows us to see exactly what has changed from earlier versions of a file and, if needed, undo some or all of the changes. The best way to understand it is to use it, so let's get started. We'll look at the Compare Editor with our text file, but keep in mind that it works with XML, Java, and many other file types. To see it in action, first let's make a few changes to the test safe string text file. So we'll come over to the file. Let's go down to this third line. We'll use our Control plus D shortcut to delete that line. Next, let's change the word idiot to fool. So we'll double click, type the word fool. Finally, Let's type a new line under here called nothing at all. Then we'll save by typing control S. Now we'll right click inside the editor and select compare with local history. This opens up the history view down below. Your times will be different than mine. We'll just select the oldest time and the compare editor opens up inside the edit area. Now this compare editor is just like other editors we can maximize by double clicking on the tab or by pressing control M and we can restore the same way. Now let's look at the two columns. The left column shows the current version of our file the right-hand column shows the version from the earlier point in time. Notice that the time and date are shown in the heading. Now we can see the three types of changes in our example. The first change is the line we deleted. This shows highlighted in the old version and just shows a thin line where it would have been inserted in the new version. The second change is where we just changed one word and we can see in the old version idiot is highlighted and in the new version the word fool is highlighted. The third change is the new line we added in the current file which again is highlighted over here in the current file and just shows the thin line in the older version. So we can quickly see exactly what was changed between the two versions of the file. This is an awesome feature and it gets better. Let's look at the toolbar for the Compare Editor. The first button copies all changes from the right from the old version to the left our current version. So we could basically make the new version look exactly like the old version and copy all the changes. The second button copies just the current change. So it allows us to copy one change at a time selectively again from the old version to the new version. As you might expect, we can only copy changes from the saved history to the current file. We can't change the saved history versions. The two buttons 
navigate to the next difference, navigate to the previous difference, do just what you'd expect. They either go to the next or the previous difference between the two files. And then these last two buttons basically do the same thing. They go to the next change or the previous change. So let's restore the line we deleted. We're already on the first change. So let's select Copy Current Change from right to left. We'll click that. And now we've copied the change. And if we save with Control plus S, our Compare Editor is updated. And now this doesn't show as a change anymore. Now one thing to notice here is that we didn't have to do anything special to keep these older file versions. Eclipse did it automatically for us each time we saved the file. That's one of the reasons that this is such a cool feature because it happens automatically. We can also control how much local history we keep by changing the local history preferences. Now as we've seen there are a lot of preferences in Eclipse and I sometimes have trouble finding the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to use our Control plus 3 quick access to help. We'll type Control plus 3, then we'll type the word history, and we can see this last option is under preferences local history. So if we click that, it takes us right to the preferences page that we wanted to see. Now here we can see how many days we want to keep files. The default is 7. We can see how many changes we want to track per file, and the default is 50. And then here we can see that there's a file size where we can say if a file is over this size, don't track changes. So we could change these and fine tune these to whatever we wanted. So we'll press Cancel. We can also use the Compare Editor to compare two separate files. So let's close this. And let's go to the Save Test String Text File and highlight the first part of the file. We'll say Control plus C to copy that to the clipboard. And then let's create a new text file. We'll go File, New, Untitled Text File. Then we'll use Control plus V to paste what we copied. And then let's type in some more stuff. Then we'll save with Control plus S. And since we haven't saved this file before, we get the Save As dialog. We'll save it under the Workbench Tutorial folder. And we'll just call this new.txt. Press OK. And now we've got a new text file. At this point, we can use the Compare Editor to compare the two text files. Before we do that, remember from earlier that we changed our open mode preferences to single click and select on hover. Let's change them back to the default mode of double click by selecting Window, Preferences, General, and we'll just select double click here to put it back to the default press OK. Now, to compare the two files, we just select them both while holding down the Control key. Then we can right click, select Compare With, Each Other, and again this opens up the Compare Editor. So here we have new.text in the left, and we have testSaveString.txt in the right. Now this screen is almost identical to the first Compare Editor screen we saw. The only difference is in the toolbar. Since this isn't history, since it's just two different files, Eclipse lets us copy either from the left to the right or from the right to the left. So we can copy all left to right, right to left, or we can copy the current change left to right, right to left. Other than that, it's the same as the first one we saw. While we're in here, let's look at a couple other options inside the Compare Editor. If we right click, we see we have some options. Ignore white space, show white space characters, show line numbers. White space are characters like space, tab, 
carriage return and new line. So if we select ignore white space we can compare two files just for the actual text content and not worry about whether there are different blank lines or tabs or things like that. Now let's just try we can say show white space characters and we can see that we've got these new line characters and paragraph characters and the little dots for spaces and then show line numbers is what you'd expect. We can see line numbers which sometimes can make it easier to compare two files. Let's close this now and look at one other really great feature of Eclipse. As we mentioned earlier, Eclipse keeps local history files for us automatically. Let's look at one more benefit we get from this. We'll go over and delete our new.txt file. We can just right click, select delete. It asks us to confirm. We'll say yes. And the file is deleted. Now have you ever deleted a file by mistake? Let's say that we just did and now we want the file back. Well with Eclipse's history it's no problem. We just click on the folder where the file was, right click, and one of our options is restore from local history. And since we only have deleted one file, the new.txt file is our only choice, we select restore and Eclipse puts it back for us. So Eclipse automatically tracks our work history and then lets us use that history to restore changes or even bring back deleted files. Is that cool or what? Congratulations! You've reached the end of the tutorial. I hope you've learned some things that will help you in your work with Eclipse. If you have any suggestions or comments about this tutorial, please consider posting feedback at the project website. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now. Thank you.